There's a lot of great things about high-rise living, and today I'm gonna to share with you why you should move into one this year. But don't worry, I'm also gonna share the negative things about high-rise living, so stay tuned. Benefit one, the amazing views. Talk about a 360 strip view with mountains and the city lights, the whole thing. You're gonna get that in a high-rise. So the downside of living in a single family residential home is your pool of finding a home that has a view like that is really difficult. You have to find the right elevation. You have to hope that no one's gonna build a house that blocks your view or even a building or something else. Whereas in a high rise building, you know that the further you go up and the side of the building you're on, your view is not gonna change. So if you're someone who loves an amazing view, you've been looking at a house and you just can't find that one that just makes you go, wow, you might wanna check out a high rise and I can promise you I will find you one with a spectacular view. Number two, security. What a lot of people don't realize is these high rise buildings have 24 seven security. They have security guards in the front. Some of them even have guard gates. There's cameras everywhere. And a lot of times you have to get into an elevator to go up to somebody's unit. So there is a lot of security going on. Something you're not gonna find in a single family residential home unless you set it up yourself. For a lot of people, they set up their own camera systems, ring doorbells, they have roaming guards in some communities, but in a high-rise building, security is at the utmost forefront and something that a lot of people love about the lifestyle. Number three, concierge. Just like a hotel, a lot of these buildings have concierge. You want concert tickets, you want Raiders tickets, you wanna arrange airport transportation. A lot of these buildings have a concierge service that will help you out. And as you live in that building throughout the years, you're gonna build a relationship with that concierge and it's gonna be even better of an experience for you. Now there are buildings that are condo tells. So that's a whole nother level of concierge. A building like Waldorf Astoria or Trump Towers or MGM Signature, you're getting a hotel style concierge that's gonna be able to provide you tips, inside and even reservations to some of the hottest restaurants in town. Number four, amenities. I love the high rise lifestyle because you get things like a pool, a spa, a gym, and you don't have to worry about any of it. And I think that is such a bonus. Think about this. You get an extremely luxurious, gorgeous pool that you don't have to think about because your HOA pays for it. You also have a gym, which is either an elevator up or elevator down away. So there's no excuse not to get your workout in. These are the things that make high rise living totally amazing and something a lot of my clients love. Now, some buildings have higher upper tier amenities compared to the other ones, but you are gonna pay for that. So if you're someone who's looking for the upper crust, five star, Forbes rated style amenities, you're gonna wanna be somewhere like the Waldorf Astoria. If you're someone that just likes the convenience of a high rise building, you want a nice gym, you want a clean spa, you want kind of that ease of a lifestyle with all of the amenities, but you don't wanna have that high HOA fee, I'd recommend a building like One Las Vegas or even the MGM Signature, which is amazing as well. Number five, low maintenance, lock and leave lifestyle. I have a lot of clients that I relocate to this city. And the thing that they love about high rise living is that it is a lock and leave lifestyle. Thinking about your home and the maintenance it takes to take care of that home becomes a drag if you're someone who's looking to retire here in Las Vegas or maybe start that next chapter in your life where you just lock the door, you leave, you travel, you have business to tend to. Whatever your lifestyle looks like, if you have a lot going on in your life, maintaining a home may not be something that you wanna worry or think about. That's why a high rise is so ideal for that type of lifestyle. It's a true lock and leave. You literally lock the door, you leave, you don't have to worry about gardening, pool, amenities, nothing like that. It's all taken care of. Something else my clients really like about high rise living, they get that view and they know their unit is secure. At home, you have to think about, wow, we've left out of town. Maybe someone is watching us. They know we've left. Our house is just sitting there. And you got to think about alarms and cameras and all these different things. Whereas in a high rise unit, 
turn the key, there's security downstairs, there's people downstairs making sure that everything is smooth and that the people coming in and out of the building are supposed to be there. So if you're someone out there who's super busy, lots of business to tend to, or you just like to travel a lot, high-rise living might be for you. Number six, a bonus, networking opportunities. So if you're someone who likes to socialize, you like to run into people in the mail room or while you're sipping your coffee in the morning, you might see someone and meet somebody who came into town to visit their friend. Living in a high rise building, there is lots of stuff going on always. They have social events, they have different ways to meet people. And then of course, just casually running into people. If you're someone who likes to network, this is a really great lifestyle for you. Living in a home, you're gonna have to do something like get involved in a country club or make an effort to get out there and get to know people. Whereas in a high rise, there's people in and out all day. So if you wanna network, you wanna grow, you wanna meet people because you're moving from out of town, high rise living might just be for you. Before we continue with the not so good things about high rise living, my name is Courtney Bentley and I'm a luxury real estate agent here in Las Vegas. I offer a concierge service to take all the headaches out of moving to this fabulous city I call home. The disadvantages. Number one, the time in and out of the building. So when you live in a home and you wanna leave, you literally walk out the door, go into your car and get out of Dodge. When you're in a high rise building, you have to consider and leave enough time to get up and down that elevator. You have to leave enough time to think about the valet bringing around your car. And these are things that you're gonna have to consider. You do not have the luxury of just running out of your place. You're gonna have to think about and add that additional time if you're in a hurry or in a rush it can be a bit of a pain. Number two, you're gonna have a smaller living space. If you're used to living in a large home, you're gonna have to scale down your lifestyle big time. Now there are some buildings that offer larger living spaces. One Queensbridge Place, Turnberry Place, Park Towers. These all have options where you can be above 3,000 square feet and have that single story in the sky, as I like to say. But most of these buildings have smaller units. We're talking 500 square feet, 800 square feet. So if you're someone who's coming from a large home, you have a lot of stuff, you're gonna have to downsize big time. I run into this with my clients. I had a client who was moving from a 6,500 square foot custom home in California, and she was downsizing to a one bedroom unit in Veer Towers. As she was looking, her biggest concern wasn't living in a building and it wasn't the view and the amenities and the concierge and the valet and all the amazing things that come along with high rise living. It was, Courtney, what am I gonna do with all my stuff? We had to have that conversation. Well, wouldn't it be nice to get rid of all this stuff that's holding you down that you don't need anymore? Why do you need four beds? You only need one now. Why do you need all these clothes? Do you even like these clothes anymore? These are all things to consider though. If you're someone who has a lot of sentimental items, you're gonna have to put those things into storage or you're gonna have to find a unit that has a room that you could stick all that stuff in. But that again is only in certain buildings where you can get that size of a unit. So that is a huge disadvantage to some of my clients and maybe to you. Number three disadvantage, shared common areas. This is something I discussed that could be a pro or a con. Like I shared in the pros, it's awesome if you like to network and meet people or you're relocating here and don't know many people, you can hang out in the common areas and I'm sure you'll meet somebody very quickly. But if you're someone who's very private, you don't like sharing things, high rise living is definitely not for you. You're gonna be sharing an elevator, you're gonna be sharing the common areas, you're gonna be sharing the gym, you're gonna be sharing all this stuff. So if you don't like to share, please do not move into a high rise, you will be absolutely miserable. Number four disadvantage, pet policies. As someone who has two Shih Tzus, Living in a high rise was a bit of a pain. To take my dog out, I had to go down the service elevator, walk to the pet park, make sure my dog didn't use the restroom as we were walking over there, and get them to the pet park, which hopefully didn't have a bunch of dogs already in it because my dogs are not that friendly. They're the sweetest dogs to humans, but to other dogs, they get very nervous, and it's just not great. So for us, that was the only disadvantage personally for me when we lived in a high rise, is I had my two lovely little Shih Tzus. They're used to having their own yard and I had to share this pet park and 
It was kind of, it was, it was actually a big, huge pain in the butt. It was something my husband said, I can't do this anymore. We need a house again. But if you're someone who doesn't have pets, this doesn't apply to you. But if you do have pets, there are rules. Like I shared, you have to use the pet park, which can be a bit of a pain, especially if your dog isn't trained. Two, a lot of these buildings have pet weight policies and they only allow for you to have so many animals. Most of them allow you to have an animal up to 80 pounds. Now, some of them even have it where if you have two, which again, they may only allow two in some of these buildings, they can be 80 pounds combined. So your dog might have to lose some weight. <laughs> no, but really, these are things you have to consider. If you have lots of large animals, high rise living is definitely not for you. If you have an animal that's used to having this huge yard and having its own space, High rise living might be a huge adjustment for you. So these are all different things that you need to consider and think about before looking into high rise living. Number five, financing can be very difficult in the high rises here in Las Vegas. So a lot of these high rises were built between 2006 and 2008. And I've, you've been reading the news or you have been around for a while, you know that in 2008, a lot of things crashed here. So you can imagine a lot of these buildings went belly up and so financing in these buildings can be very tough. Now, as someone who does a lot of business in the high rises, I know the lenders that you can use, but that can be discouraging, especially if you're someone that has a particular lender and a particular bank you work with, you may not be able to finance your dream condo. So these are all things to consider and can be huge disadvantages. Pet policies, they can be difficult to finance, shared areas. If you're hearing all of this and you're going, I don't wanna deal with any of that, I would highly suggest looking for a lovely home and I would love to help you with that too. My opinion, should you live in a high rise? Should you not live in a high rise? Well, that's up to you. And I hope these pros and cons have helped you make that decision. And if you have any additional questions, be sure to comment below. But for me personally, I've lived in both. I have two Shih Tzus like I shared, so the pet park thing was a huge disadvantage to me, but I love high rise living. I loved living in one Queens Ridge place where I had a barista. Oh, getting cold brew in the morning was amazing. I met tons of people in the little common area over there. I loved having a spa and a gym, just an elevator right away. For me, I went to the gym sometimes twice a day because it was that easy to get to. And I just loved having a smaller space where I didn't have so much stuff crowding my lifestyle and I didn't have to worry about maintenance and all the little things that come along with living in a home. I do live in a house now and I'm kind of 50-50. Do I like living in a house better? I love it for my animals. My husband likes it more. It's kind of nice having some privacy when I have friends come over. We don't have to worry about you know being too loud because I live in this great house. Compared to living at a high rise, you know, I have to be considerate of the building and different things like that. So again, like I shared, I'm 50-50 on it. I prefer high rise living, but my husband likes house living. So, you know, I do both and I'm happy either way. I hope this video helps you make that decision. And again, like I shared, if you have any questions, please comment below, I'm happy to answer. For more information about high rise living, be sure to check out the videos on the screen and I'll see you on the next one.